<laughs> we want to we want to we want to keep him here. Well, Carol, I don't want to interrupt, but I do want to say I'm happy to be here. And if you grant me one indulgence, um, you know, I once waited tables. And I, I know what it is for these young people who've been waiting tables here, and I'd like to give them a round of applause. They've done a great job. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, because every, everybody on this staff does a great job because um, there are not many saloons that were, uh, were set up to be uh, talk shows as well. <laughs> and, uh, and this is a, a compact space. But since you're sitting on a bar stool, I, I ask that you just pretend that it's the two of us alone, sitting on bar, to bar stalls talking, right? <laughs> but you know better. And I've retired from that line of work. Yes, in indeed, indeed. Um, uh, well, it is a great beginning, I think, working in the restaurant business. Uh, you know, the, the nice thing about Nathan's is that almost all these kids go on, fortunately, to other careers. I'm very happy for them. Um, you, you uh, like any journalist, probably likes uh, a fresh top on a story. And uh, I think you know where I'm going here. And um, I, I think that Washington Examiner gave it to me this morning when I got an email. They send me emails at 5.30 in the morning. But it was, um, Katie Couric was in uh, Washington last night speaking at the National Press Club. And um, she, uh, she was asked about your lawsuit against CBS. And I just want to read what she said. Uh, there were things in there that were quite, they're talking about your original story. There were things in there that were quite egregious in terms of how it was reported, and sloppy work is sloppy work. They did not dot their I's and cross their T's when it came to that story, and our job is to get it right. What, what do you have to say to Katie, if anything, <laughs> about getting it right? Uh, you know, I don't choose to respond to that at, at this time. You know, I understand, uh, and I think the audience and the public understands, that uh, she wants to carry uh, heavy water for CBS, and, and I understand that. But beyond that, uh, I go on. Um, do you think her remarks were probably scripted by CBS in some way? I have no way of knowing. But you've been in that job, and you know that in that job, um, you and, 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 and that is something you address in your lawsuit, that uh, in that job you are you are pretty much the figurehead for the company. So what you say has to be um, uh, taken as accounting for the company position. Well, I don't take myself seriously, but I do take this seriously. Mm -hmm. And I want to be uh, careful here because I want to be both accurate and fair. Mm -hmm. And I, I simply don't know. Uh, you know, I, I knew um, Katie when she was here in Washington not well. Um, I've always found myself sort of pulling for her because her father was a newspaper man, mm -hmm. and I think quite a good one here. But beyond that, um, I just choose not to go there. You were, you would probably say, um, somewhat misquoted um, a while back, you were referring to the evening news as being dumbed down and tarted up. And that got construed as you calling Katie a tart. Uh, that wasn't what you meant. Well. Uh, no, it isn't what I meant, and it's not, uh, the quote is correct, but now I don't have deep doing to get into this, but I have been saying for years, and not excluding myself from it, yeah. uh, that we all of us in journalism, some more than others, um, that we have a lot to answer for, because the standards have been declining, not increasing. And I was saying as early as the 1990s, that what's happening, that we, the news gets uh, trivialized, mm -hmm. gets centered on celebrities, gets uh, sleezed up, mm -hmm. tarted up, and if you look up the word in the dictionary, it's quite a good use of the word. Now, it's true that uh, uh, Mr. Moonves chose to put his spin on it, mm -hmm. and again, I have no complaints. Uh, you know, news is a contact sport. Well, <laughs> yes. And one gets a customer Well, so are lawsuits. <laughs> uh, that's true. But uh, that, you know, I've been saying it for years. Yeah. Were you saying it when you were doing it? I was saying it when I was doing it, and also holding myself, trying to hold myself accountable and saying, I think without exception, that when I make these statements, I do not exclude myself from it. And this is one of the things that I feel strongly about, Carol, that particularly those of us who have benefited from journalism, mm -hmm. not just television journalism, but 
uh, particularly those of us in television journalism, would say that on our watch, the standards have gone down. Now, we can become vice presidents in charge of excuses about why yeah. they have, and, and I think it's important to try to explain to the audience, they understand, they get it, but what they don't get often is why the standards have gone down. There's a lot of reasons for that. The enlargement of the competitive pit, particularly beginning in the 1980s with the advent of cable and satellite. Right. Um, and with the enlargement of the competitive pit, uh, competition has become more ferocious. And again, I'm speaking for myself here, but I know that it happens with others, that the pressure gets on to say, yeah. we need better demographics, we need better... Uh, well, that happened ratings. to you. Of course it happened, of course. But you, because but Dan, let me take you back. Um, let me take you back to when you first had the job. Don't you feel they tinkered with you a lot? And I don't know how much of it, I'd be interested to know how much of it you were you know, like, this is a great idea, whether it was the sweaters or more features or, you know, but, but how did you feel about all that when it was happening to you? Well, um, widely believed it may not be, but true it is. The sweaters um, were an accident. You got cold on the set? <laughs> no, I did. I, I had a cold, and uh, to this extent, I had a cold and I wore a sweater. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, Van Sauter walked in the room. My, my wife and members of the family and some members of CBS said, hey, that looks, you know, that looks pretty good. And so <laughs> I wore them for a while. Right. But that was not even too. But of course, this is the reality on the inside. That's what we want. The pressure's always on. And increasingly so. And I would say probably greater now, if anything, than when I was doing the evening news, which hasn't been that long ago. The pressure's on to do whatever is necessary to get better ratings. That was the, uh, that's what it was when I came to CBS News. However, at that time, both the ownership of the network and the top management of the network had a, a degree, and I would say a fairly strong degree. Yes, we always want to win the ratings, we want to get better ratings and anything you can do to do that, but, and that's one difference between then and I think now, it was, however, your first job is to meet the public responsibility, to fulfill the public trust, to do the news. And whatever you do, we want you to operate first and foremost within that framework. Yeah. Now, as time goes along, and keeping in mind, I do not accept myself from criticism of this, small compromises begin to be made. Someone says, real-time conversation. You know, we have a lot of this international news back in the 1980s, we're still calling it foreign news. Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> <laughs> that was then. No, we, we have our own version of politically correct uh, yeah. language. So, uh, in fact, I was once said, Dan, will you please stop calling it the foreign news? Because foreign is not a word that really feels right. just right. right. We prefer right. international news. Right. So international news. But back to the point, so it was, you know, maybe we should do a little less just a little less mm. foreign news. And can you ride chip, with that? Chip, chip. You make very small compromises, the mm. cumulative effect of the small compromises. Uh, next thing you know, you look back and you say, you know, it isn't just that we've trimmed back our foreign, forgive me, international news, but we've, we've really cut back a, a long mm. way. Having said that, I want to emphasize that, you know, I worked over the years at CBS with some of the best people in journalism, not just in broadcast journalism. In the best era of CBS. Well, the Murrow era was not a bad well, era, but, but, you were, you but nonetheless, <laughs> and that there were people who would speak up uh, against these small compromises, who uh, I always prided myself, rightly or wrongly, I knew the people that I worked with. Uh, and But they would come up and say, you know. What are you doing? Bringing you water to boil. That, you know, you start with small heat. Yeah and you keep that heat constant, and the, the, the water warms and then gets hot fairly slowly. And that's what happened on the inside. But we're now at the here and now. And I think the audience understands, certainly a lot of them do, and I think people understand that something important has happened uh, to news. Right. And that there is an understanding that uh, you can't have a democracy that sustains and flourishes if you don't have a free press.